Consider supporting Arceus Hoop on Patreon for as little as a dollar per month. Link available in the video description. Hello, welcome back to the A to Z of Archaeology. Today is the letter H, and that means we're going to be looking at the Harris Matrix. Um, now, the Harris Matrix is a way of recording archaeological sites, and it really has its roots in the uh, 18th century. In the 18th century, a geologist called James Hutton uh, suggested something called uniformitarianism. Now, that means um, that everything that we see in the world around us, in the geological world around us, has been formed using processes which we can see today. In other words, the mountain range wasn't suddenly thrust up out of nowhere, and river valleys have always taken more than five minutes to carve. This put an increased emphasis on the depth of time uh, of the planet and how old the planet was, but it also meant that archaeologists had to keep um, a good record of what was above what in the archaeological record, because um, now we knew how these layers were being formed. The theory goes that the different layers, or strata, are older the further down you go. In other words, new ones are laid on top of older ones. This may sound fairly obvious, but at the time it was a groundbreaking concept, and it would help archaeologists date sites and objects relatively. However, the reality is a little more complicated. Different strata aren't laid down in a uniform fashion and be it through geological action, or people, for example, digging a pit or farming and disturbing the soil, different layers can actually be very, very complicated. Therefore, the relationship between, say, the apple and the banana, and the apple and the playing card, can be very, very difficult to understand just by looking at it from the side. It is only through excavation that we understand how each layer relates to the next. Early stratigraphic drawings were very naive, and one suspects that the site was being forced into a preconceived idea. And even the best drawing can be extremely difficult to understand unless you have done the excavation yourself. So if the primary goal of excavation is a robust data set which can be easily understood by other archaeologists but also re-interrogated by those archaeologists, um, we have to come up with a better way of, uh, of drawing what it was that we were seeing. Enter Dr. Edward Harris. In 1974, he decided to assign different objects, contexts and features on the excavation a number, and then place those numbers into a relationship with each other, using a flowchart. In this way, we could understand how each context related to the next, and how each feature developed over time, and this information could be transferred from one archaeologist to another with very little uh, misunderstanding in what it meant. The idea is now standard practice on sites around the world. So, how does this relate to a real archaeological site? Well, let's have a look. Here is a hypothetical cross-section. Notice how cut number 5 is above feature 11. It separates features 9 and 10, and it contains feature 12. Now, here is the same cross-section represented using a Harris matrix. Notice how the same features are now represented in a way which is clearly defined, and cannot be misconstrued. In this way, the rather subjective elements of drawing a site can be boiled down and more importantly made clear for those people who come later on to the excavation. Just by using numbers for each feature, the Harris Matrix has revolutionised the publication and communication of archaeological data. So, that's been H, Harris Matrix. Um, the Harris Matrix is extremely useful. It's changed the way that, uh, that uh, sites are recorded and the way that we understand them uh, through the publications uh, that are put out about them. Um, the different contexts and their relationships are easily understood and uh, in the future, hopefully, they'll be just as easy to revisit, um, hopefully, as they were the day that they were excavated. 
If you found this video useful, please feel free to comment below. Um, if you haven't found it useful, feel free to comment below. Um, if you would like, uh, please do subscribe to the channel. If you subscribe, then you will be able to follow every single video that we put on here, or I, rather I put on here. And um, also, uh, we do now have a Facebook page, so if you want to find Arkea Soup Productions and click like, uh, then you'll be able to follow us on there. And, um, for example, this weekend there are a couple of articles which I, I didn't have time to make a video for, which were very interesting. So they usually go end up on that page, so feel free to, to, to join the group. Thank you very much.